Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of our VGC 2020 Battle Series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and we're going to continue on with this Eveltal and Xerneas team today. We've had some good games with it the past couple of days. Um, if you've missed any of those, I'll link a card up here for you and you can go and check them out. The team is always is down in the description below. There is a roll paste and a poker paste. Check it out in your own time and try it out if you'd like to if you do try it out let me know how you get on with the team it's quite nice it's quite unique i think got some nice text to it as well um we're going to end up the week with it as always if you do enjoy the content please remember to drop a like on the video do subscribe to the channel and um leave a comment down below so hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our first opponent today uh, we're just going to search now. We had some, uh, like I say, we've had some good battles with this team this week. Uh, we kicked off with a really good one yesterday against a high, highly rated Spanish player uh, playing that uh, Spanish rain team uh, that we've seen so commonly used recently, but with a Ferrothorn over what you would normally see the Cortana there uh, from the original build from Alex and Eric. And um, then we had a game against Scott uh, that uh, double protected. Just ruined the game for us, really. But uh, we'll not we'll not mention that too much because <laughs> it's coming across like I'm really salty about it. Gee, I'm a little bit, but it's fine. It's fine to get a little bit annoyed about things, but um, some dead. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I'm just hoping the bad spot's been like so dead. Where is everyone? Where is everyone? Is everyone just waiting on Sword and Shield and just thinking, forget it, I don't want to play Ultra anymore? But there's still lots of events to come in Ultra. You know, we've got the special event in. Uh, France coming up very soon, and then we've got, I think that's the last major of the this season, like the ultra season for us in Europe, uh, but lots of MSS and PCs I'm sure going on. We can't find our first opponent of the episode, so uh, I'll just cut here and we'll come back when we do find our first opponent of the episode. And we finally got our first opponent of the episode, so we'll hop straight into team preview. Okay, so we've got a team consisting of Duskman, Necrozma, Groudon, Tapu Fini, Salamence, Incineroar, and Tapu Lele. So we've got that kind of psychic spam sort of call with the Tapu Lele. Duskman, Necrozma, that's going to be Ultra Necrozma as well. We've got Tailwind support, potentially Trick Room support um, there on the Duskman. And then you've got Tapu Fini as well for extra terrain support. Um, and then the Incineroar and the Salamence double intimidate there. Uh, right, let's think. What can we do here? Serena, not so good in this matchup because of the psychic terrain. Um, kind of takes away the its ability to function so well. Eveltal, actually really good in this matchup. And I do like Eveltal quite a lot here. Uh, Double Intimidate, also very nice in this matchup. We've got to watch out for the Incineroar Fake Out turn 1, I think. Um, but we can play around that a little bit ourselves. So I think what we'll do is go Incineroar Fake Finny with Eveltal and do we want Xerneas? I think Xerneas can be quite good, um, especially if the opposing Duskmane does Ultra Burst. Uh, the other option would be bringing in Landorus um, because it does do well against things like uh, Groudon, Duskmane, and the Incineral. Uh, hmm. Now I'm going to bring Xerneas. Because Xerneas is just ridiculously strong, isn't it? So we just want Xerneas. I've literally been searching for an opponent for like... I must have went through the process about five times. It's like you cannot find an opponent. There's literally no one on. So uh, it's a bit of a... It, it must be just a bad time <laughs> to search. But we'll see. We're going to see Salamence and Tapu Lele come out for my opponent. Uh, which is fine. Like this, this, this lead uh, really doesn't make like anything very like it's not a difficult lead for us because we're going to override the terrain which is perfect we'll see the intimidate come out from the salamence but we'll get the intimidate back onto it um and i think the first thing what we can try and do is probably go for u-turn out onto the tapu lele and go for an icy wind uh, we might see a double edge we might see a tailwind set from the mens um but it'd be nice to just keep our intimidate in the back um, the other option here would have been, I think, not bringing the Eveltal to this matchup and potentially bringing the Landorus here, because Landorus is a good switch in here. Um, just to get the double Intimidate onto the Ment, and it also gives us a, a faster pivot out the next turn as well. We're going to see the Salamence retreat, we're going to see the Groudon come in, and uh, so this is fine. Like, we can. The only problem is, I think, going into this next turn. Is potentially we're going to see a moon blast 
from the Lele, but we are going to have a slow U turn out onto the Lele. So, I mean, in all, if we go do see Moonblast, we'll, we'll take that before Evelta comes onto the field. So, it's not the worst thing in the world. Magic Room. Huh. Okay. That's fine. We do lose our Assault Vest, though, with, uh, with Evelta, which isn't the best. Um, but not uh, the end of the world and we will be faster than the Lele as well so we will be able to get Snarl off before we can do anything um, okay we lose like all our berries as well come on let's go let's go let's go let's go right sorry my screen just freezing there you know what it's like loading and just lagging a bit right so I've to onto the field um, do we just snarl? I think snarl's not bad, to be honest. Uh, you don't know what kind of ground on this could be. It could be special. It's more likely to be physical, though. Um, so we could just snarl, and we could potentially just go for Nature's Madness into the ground and get some damage off onto it there. Um, it might go for a Fire Punch. Um, but... It might not as well. It might go for an Eruption. Do not know. Anyway, we get that off, and uh, if it goes for a Precipice Blades, I mean, like, Ivelto's fine. We get some Nature's Madness damage off onto the Groudon. Uh, the, the opposing Finny's definitely going to be. Uh, yeah, there's a Fire Punch. Okay. Uh -huh. Yep, that's fine. Um, the opposing Finny, I think, definitely is the move. I think for using, utilizing. Um, Magic Room, it would make sense. I'm going to go for an Nature's Madness into the Finny. I'm going to switch in Incineroar onto our Evelto. Maybe my opponent sees this, but uh, I think keeping Evelto around for later on would be quite nice. Um, especially if the Duskmane's lying in wait in the back. We know there's the Finny, the Groudon, the Salamence so far. So. Maybe the Groudon protects here while the the opposing Finny tries to get an icy wind off. That make a lot of sense. Yeah. And there's a protect. And there's the icy wind. Yep. Oh, you can get some nice damage into this Finny here. And it's all about like chipping things down really right now. I think that's what we want to try and do is just chip things down, get them in range for something like Xerneas to come in a little bit later on um, and, and potentially pick up some knockouts. Now it might be a good time to try and get our Xerneas onto the field. So I'm going to U-turn out onto the type of Finny and I'm going to switch into Xerneas. Do we get this? Do we see the Nature's Madness? This is a problem, like, I don't want to switch Xerneas in and take a Nature's Madness from the, the opposing Finny. Um, but if I can kind of maneuver this the, this play, um, I'm probably better off bringing Xerneas in on the Incineroar. So if we go for this, yeah, we'll go for that. And then I'm going to just bring in Ebeltor. I want to preserve Xerneas as much as I can. Okay, we're going to see the Groudon switch out, which is fine. Salamence? Yeah. Just madness into the yeah, Avelto. Because the other thing we've got to think of, right? Like, like now, is um, we bring Xerneas onto the field. Moonblast probably gets. But the Salamence probably goes for a Tailwind. But I think if I go Moonblast into Finny, 
and then I switch into Incineroar here. And then the next turn we can go for the Geomancy. Because you've got to worry about the Tapu Lele coming in. Like That's what we're trying to do, is like bait in the Tapu Lele when uh, we've got that, that board position Incineroar Xerneas. Um, and we want to try and lock in uh, Misty Terrain so we can get this board position where we can get the Xerneas set up with the Geomancy and then from here it'll be pretty easy to kind of um, manipulate the field. We're going to see the Tapu Lele come back onto the field now. be interesting to see how much a Moonblast does to it. Can we take... I don't think we'll take it down from this range, but you never know. Uh, Salmon's going to Mega Revolve. I'd say, best guess, Ment is going to go for a Tailwind. It might go for a Double Edge into Xerneas, but probably Tailwind. Hyper Voice. Huh. Okay. I'll take that. Got a Geomancy there as well. Hmm. Ooh. Okay. Magic Room. We don't want Magic Room being a thing anymore. So, we'll switch into Finny, um, and we'll fake out We'll fake out the Lele. The big problem here would be doing this. Um, <clears throat> the men's gone for a Tailwind now, and then we take down the Lele, the Groudon gets onto the field for free. Uh, and we're still stuck with Incineroar out and top of Finny. But I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world, because Finny's got, still got full health. Uh, we've got to switch from Incineroar into Evelto if you want, then it allows the switch back into Incineroar. Misty Terrain's on the field. We can still disrupt with things like Icy Wind if we need to. Um, it's just we don't want this Magic Room being in effect any longer because it, it really hinders the ability of Xerneas to get set up, and we want to be able to set up if we can. The Ments is just going to protect here. We're probably going to see the attempt for the Magic Room, I'd imagine. Uh, but no Tailwind going up makes things a lot easier for us. We do get rid of the Lele. And like I say, one of the things we've got now is if the Groudon does come onto the field, which makes a lot of sense for it to come on uh, because it pressures both our Pokemon pretty hard, um, is we've got the switch out to the Veltal. If we lose the Veltal, that's fine. We can get an icy wind off, and then we've got the Incineroar to come back onto the field to get that Intimidate onto both of these these threats ASAP. Um, okay, so we will go for that icy wind. And we will bring in Evelto. And we've also got Heal Pulse on our Finny as well. So if we can position ourselves well enough, we can make use of the Heal Pulse onto our Xerneas um, in the late game. But Evelto feels a bit more like fodder now um, than anything else. But I mean, if we see a Precipice Blades, we get in for free. And we've still got a we've got Sucker Punch that we can utilize. Yeah, we do see the, the Precipice Blades. Okay, well, this is fine. Um, I see Wind's going to do a nice chunk to the Salamence. Yeah, and maybe a Sucker Punch gets the Groudon. I don't know if it will, to be honest. Or are we better? Are we better off just switching into Incineroar? Um, no. I'm going to go for another Icy Wind. And I'm going to go for the Sucker Punch. I think the Sucker Punch... Like, Sucker Punch is pretty strong. Like, it might get the Groudon. Nah, it's not quite enough. Hyper kind of Voice, do we take it with Evelto? Oh, we do, we take it, and the berry should proc. Now we're going to get the Icy Wind off, and now we're going to be all alright, unless we see a Fire Punch come up from the Groudon into Evelto. There's Precipice Blades, it's fine. And it's so imperative to stop that Magic Room, because it, it like our berries wouldn't be proccing otherwise. Icy Wind, we're going to cancel out this um, Tailwind, and then the Mens is definitely in um, Sucker Punch range now. Right, so we need to play this a little bit carefully. I mean, once we get rid of both of these targets, it makes things makes our life a lot easier. So, a bunch we need to go for on the Ments. I think. Yeah, we'll go for the Sucker Punch on the Ments and just the Icy Wind. I don't mind losing both these Pokemon now because, it, like, if we lose both now, it means we get Xerneas and Incineroar onto the field and we've got that, that fake out Geomancy. So let's see what we can do. Are you going to let us fake out the Mens? The problem would be the Mens protecting, yeah, the Groudon going for the attack. But I mean, once we get rid of the Groudon, 
Because an icy wind will get rid of the Groudon. Yeah. And then the Finny comes back onto the field, which is fine. Um, and the thing is, we've got Incineroar that we can bring in now. Uh, just fake out an icy wind. Uh, the Mentis just protects it. Has to go for a double protect. And like we're going to be able to lock this one up just with the, the fake out support that we've got like Tapu Fini coming in for my opponent it's fine, they, they might have Icy Wind but I don't know maybe, do they have Icy Wind? are they going to have Icy Wind? I don't know the other option we've got here is just to um, actually U-turn with Incineroar onto, yeah I think I do worry about the Z move on the Finny, 100%. Like, I worry about the Twinkle Tackle here. Um, we got Icy Wind, and. Or do we just fake out the Mens and just Icy Wind? Because then you have to target down the Finny. Do we just U-turn? I think we'd make use of our fake out while we've got it. The fake out might be enough. I don't know if it will be enough to get the mens, but that's for the double. Okay, we will get the fake out there. Could have went for the um. Okay. Yeah, we'll lose. And this is where the, the U-turn would have been the better play because then we have the active fake out gone into this turn, and the Xerneas coming onto the field. But at the same time. I think we just attack the Finny and go for a U-turn into the Mence, honestly. And I think a Moonblast will be enough to get the Finny. And Mence minus one, it's not going to be enough to get the Xerneas. Minus two, sorry. Um, Yeah, we'll go for that Moonblast. And we'll go for a U-turn into the Mence. And I think, like, we might see a Z-move, but we'll get the Mence with Incineroar. It's just about getting the Moonblast onto this Finny. I don't think it's Berry either because of the, the magic room. Oh, it survives! But the special attack drop is huge. It is Berry, actually. Wow, okay. That's interesting. So there's no Z-move there. We, I, I really expected the Z-move. I'm going to see Moonblast. Uh, special attack drop is pretty huge here for us. Uh, double edge. Do we take it? Oh, we do. Ah, oh, and the men's goes down. Ah, oh, the double intimidate. Oh, we got onto it. It's huge. And then the U-turn coming out into the Finny. And then, yeah, I mean, we've got this now, haven't we? Um, Because we can just Moonblast. Moonblast and then go for the uh, the U-turn again. Oh, we could just Flare Blitz, I guess. Flare Blitz just got with a bit of Flare, a bit of style. And yeah, and that's going to be fine. Instead of all avoiding, but that's all right. I mean, good game to my opponent. Um, I think we could have went for a bit more of a the smarter player with the U-turn to have the fake out uh, Geomancy. But I was worrying too much. I think about something that wasn't there, um, and that was the Z move on the Finny, and that was all like from the the whole Magic Room setup. Um, but and I think if you look back at uh, the World Championships teams that were very much like this. Um, Finny's tended to have the uh, the Z move there, but I could be wrong. Um, but yes, anyway, let's move on. That was our first game. I'm looking at the time on the recording, 26 minutes. It's definitely not been that because uh, I've had to cut so much of this video, like 10 minutes of it just searching. So we'll find our next opponent. This is going to be the last one of the week for us to finish up with this team. Um, so hopefully we can finish on a nice win. Um, and I mean... It's a little sad because we've only had three days with this team, so we're not going to see everything and see how this team can perform fully, but I mean, we're getting a good idea of what this team can do, so we'll go on to this last one. Play a little bit of Gladian here um, and see how uh, long it takes to find the next opponent. I'll tell you what, what I'll do is just cut it right now and we'll come back when we bump into that next opponent of the episode. And we've got Jack, so we're up against Jack next and uh, we'll go straight into team preview. So Jack playing a team of Groudon, Tapu Lele, Incineroar, Gengar, 
Ferrothorn and Kyogre. So this one is where Eveltal has a field day. So I think what we'll do is lead with Eveltal and Landorus here. Uh, I'd imagine you probably want to bring the Tapu Lele as a lead against against this team. Um, and then we will have Incineroar. I think we definitely need it for the Ferrothorn. And do we want uh, Xerneas or do we want Tapu Fini? Um, probably Xerneas. And we'll just lock in straight away. Jet locked in straight away knows what he's wanting to do. This dual primals call. Um, hopefully this one's quite a quick one, so we can um, we can showcase how the team works. The thing to worry about initially is also obviously going to be that Tapu Lele, but I think a snarl, uh, a knockoff, or just a snarl and an earthquake could be enough to deal with it. The Tapu Lele is not really threatening us too much. We're going to see Incineroar and Gengar come out for my opponent, which is fine. Um, Icy Wind could be a bit of a problem for us with the with our Landorus, of course. But our dark part of the team, I Veltal, isn't really too threatened. But I think, I mean, what do you do here? Do you go Icy Wind fake out into Landorus, or um, I'm going to just snarl whatever, and I think I'm going to do I just U-turn? I don't want to take an Icy Wind with Landorus. That's the thing. So I'm just going to switch Landorus out into Incineroar here. And the worst thing, like the support would be good for us with the, uh, from my opponent's end would be to go for an icy win with the Gengar if they've got access to it. And there's the trap coming out. And I don't think we see my opponent go for you, Tim, because I think the pressure's they they need to fake out. And then they fake out the Landorus, I think that's where you would go. Yeah. And oh, we might see a Trick Room Gengar here. Maybe. Which isn't the worst thing in the world at all. If we do, like, I don't mind Trick Room going up. There it is. Okay. We'll probably see the Gengar protect this turn. Um, so, I mean, we can go for. The Incineroar is going to pivot out first. We could foul play into the opposing Incineroar slot and go for a U-turn into that slot as well. Because if a Primal comes in there, Primals generally have huge attack stats. Um, so foul play is always doing really nice damage to them. So if you can suspect potential Primal coming in, either Kyogre or Groudon, we're going to get some nice damage onto it um, before it can really do very much. Um, so it'll be interesting to see which one it is. It is Groudon, okay. Big bad Groudon. And I mean, one of the things you can do, we're pivoting out here with our own Incineroar, so we can get a Landorus onto the field. And just get an Intimidate onto it, rather than bringing in Xerneas right now. Uh, with the Gengar at minus one, it's not really putting too much pressure on offensively. We've got Sucker Punch as well that can threaten it. I don't think minus one Fire Punch is going to be enough to get our... Landorus, um, and especially with we're weakening it with foul player. If it's got eruption, then it's not really going to be doing too much at all. The other option is we could just lock into Earthquake and Snarl uh, this next turn and just start clearing the field. There's a foul player. Intimidate not helping us at all there, but I mean, I'd rather get the Intimidate onto Groudon now. Um, and then we've got the Snarl, and then we can just go Earthquake. And we'll see what my opponent can do to get around this. Because, like, if the Groudon doesn't protect here, then it is going down 100%. Eveltal takes the Gengar down if it stays in, which is not going to. We're going to see Incineroar probably come back onto the field, yeah. But Incineroar takes an Earthquake, even minus one, it's still going to be doing. And using Jungle Damage, putting it in range for the next turn, at least. Uh, and Thunder Punch. Ha! <laughs> um, Alright. I, I, I'd I, still think like Fire Punch would have been a better option there. It's boosted by the sun, doing a lot more damage. Uh, we're going to be able to get rid of the Groudon now. Uh, the only thing is, like you've got to think the Kyogre could come in and put a bit of pressure onto us. Especially because we've not really got the switches in for it. Um... And probably not taking these Pokemon down is is better for us, almost, because I think we can 
stall at this trick room because Kyogre is going to be a big, big pain for us to deal with. I'm going to go Oblivion Wing into the Groudon. Uh, actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to go Sucker Punch into the Groudon. I'm going to switch out Lander into Incineroar here. And I'm going to hope that you go Fake Out into the Landorus. But let's see what my opponent does. Pick out into Landorus, yeah, and then Sucker Punch, let's take down the Groudon. <coughs> and then I'd imagine Kyogre going to come onto the field now. Uh, so I don't think you bring Gengar. Unless you want to trap us, potentially, and then pivot out with your Incineroar. But we're going to try and prevent that this turn by just going for a snarl and a fake out into the opposing incinerator. We want to stop that that U-turn into the Kyogre. We don't want my opponent getting any momentum here. And the Kyogre coming in under Trick Room. Uh, Ivalto's like great uh, defensively with the Assault Vest but still uh, a Water Spout's going to really hurt for Power Water Spout. Uh, we'll probably proc a berry on this incinerator, no doubt with this fake out but it's worth it. We don't really need to worry about the Incineroar until later on. Um, it could be a Z-move as well. That's the other option. <coughs> but we uh, aren't seeing a berry, which is fine. And the Gengar protecting here. So um, I think we just go for a Snarl again in case the Kyogre does come onto the field. And we'll just go for a, a U-turn into the opposing Incineroar. And then we see the forfeit, so good game, Jack. But we were able to manage that quite well. I mean, Veltal against Dual Primals and Mega Gengar. It's a really tough matchup for my opponent. But uh, that wraps it up for us, my friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Two really good games today, showing uh, the team how strong it can be in certain situations. So hope you've enjoyed it. Leave your comments down below. I'll see you on Monday for another episode and uh, with a brand new team. So we'll be kicking into it and exploring some more variants. As always, if you do want to see a certain call played, leave your comments down below and we'll make sure to see what we can do. But have a great weekend and I'll see you all on Monday. So until then, take care and bye-bye.